the stuff up. Well, today's uh, session was pretty good. Uh, think about this. The Dow, it was great. It was uh, marked by some profit taking. Uh, I get to admit, even I sent out some alerts to my subscribers to take profits on certain names, mostly high beta names ahead of their own earnings releases. But we should take note that the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average, has the biggest exposure to the tariff battle. And yet we even saw buyers reemerge late in the session to lift the index back up to almost a 200-point gain. The S&P 500 continues to be steady. Now it's less than 2% from its all-time high. And then there's NASDAQ. Why was it down? Google turned the tables on Amazon. And that's right. They announced their own cloud services platform and knocked 13 bucks off of Amazon instantly and really walloped the, the smaller names. But still, we're talking big market cap names, hence NASDAQ lower. And a Russell 2000 continues to mark time. Here's the thing with the Russell. It rebalanced in late June. That means the biggest and strongest names were lifted into the Russell 1000, and it's kind of struggled since then. Let's talk about potentially fake news. All the pundits keep saying that the tariff battle has hurt the stock market. I think, though, we're really in a stealth uh, market rally. From the March 23rd low, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 1,700 points. We're talking over 7%. From April 2nd, NASDAQ is up 970 points, or 14%. And, of course, uh, there's the S&P 500 up 239 points or 9%. Those are heady numbers. Any market manager would take them in a full year. Here now to discuss Danielle DiMartino Booth, former Dallas Fed advisor, and joining us, uh, joining us now and back with us, Melissa Armo. Danielle, a lot of news this week. we got the EU meeting tomorrow. Uh, we're in the midst of earnings season. And then, of course, that big GDP report. Uh, where do you think, where do you rank these things in terms of influence on the market and also what we should be keeping an eye on for the second half? You know, I, I think that this week the markets are, are saying no news is good news. We haven't seen any further bad news out on the tariffs. I think that that's one of the reasons that you saw the Dow Jones Industrials rip higher today. Uh, and I think that all eyes right now are on earnings. Look, Charles, you follow this as closely as anybody in, in the financial media. You know that nine out of 10 companies have been beating on the top line. And you know that eight out of 10 companies have been beating on, uh, excuse me, I got it backwards. <laughs> nine out of 10 companies have been beating their earnings. Eight out of 10 have been, have been beating on sales. These are very strong figures. The only anomaly I would throw out there today is what you just brought up, and that's the Russell. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, a lot of people don't realize in late June, uh, they rebalanced the Russell on June 22nd. So they took out the hot names like Grubhub and is struggling for leadership. I think we'll be okay there. Melissa, um, I want to ask you uh, about uh, about this, you know, this sort of stealth market rally that we have. We got hit. The biggest times the market got hit this year, the first big hit, of course, was when that jobs report came in and employment was up 2.9 percent. The Dow that day was down 666 points. And then there was a fear about the inverted yield curve that drove it even lower. Since we got the announcements of trade tariffs and with implement, uh, the implementation of them, uh, the market has still been steadily going higher, really uh, countering what everyone's saying. I think the only thing that could take this market off course would be the tariffs right now. I think economically the market's strong. All the reports seem to keep coming out good. I think even if there's a hiccup in a report between now and the end of the summer, I don't think it's going to take the market off its course, which is rallying. However, the tariffs could, and you know that's one thing that's an issue. But say this week, you got the big big tech companies all reporting this week. If they all do it, if they all report good, if they all gap up and make new highs and keep going, there's literally nothing that I see stopping this market except for a huge, massive negative thing that would happen in tariffs, and it would have to be so big to knock this market off if all those big tech companies report well. Danielle, uh, GDP report, uh, I guess consensus is in a forest area. Barclay says, I think last time I checked their model had 5.2%. How does that influence Fed, the Fed from here? Well, I think that this keeps the Fed's uh, foot, foot on the accelerator, Charles, going forward. I really do. I'm hoping that they're starting to pay some attention, however, to some of the weeds in, in, these, in these reports. We had a services industry report out this morning that showed employment expectations are at the weakest level since January and that service companies are starting to really feel higher fuel prices. So the, the Fed continues to walk a very thin line here, despite how strong the current economic data stream is is they can still over tighten this economy into into a slowdown charles yeah my greatest fear right now is the fed and i think the greatest worry for markets at least from what i'm hearing from companies actually happens to be the strong dollar uh, at least it was in the mm -hmm. second quarter ladies thank you both very much for your expertise it's always a pleasure to have you on the show up next attorney general jeff session well he takes on the liberal college culture and he catches the liberal media 
flat-footed. We'll be right back.